cracks. It's bad, okay? We've got some good ones on this here beam, and we're gonna do everything we can to go ahead and fix it. Now, this has already been repaired once, maybe even twice. We're gonna make sure it doesn't have to again. Showing up to the amusement park and finding out that one of your favorite rides is down for maintenance is a real bummer. This company wants to keep everyone nice and safe. They picked up a couple cracks on the ride and they want to make sure that they're fixed up before anyone else rides it. So that's why they called us in to do some repairs on some pretty serious cracks. We got us a little house call today. Got all the perfect tools that we need for it. This Mini Rogue is perfect to tote around. It's a dual voltage machine. We got all our other tools. We got our hoods. We got some die pin and trip testing. We got our argon. We got everything we need to get in there and get something done. Before we touch a single thing, we made sure we had maintenance come over to flip this machine off. So it's all locked out right now in the off position so we don't mess something up or get hurt. Very important. Before we do anything, we want to get with management to find a little history about the damage here. This repair has been done twice before. There are still cracks popping up. We want to know the reason why, what do they want repaired, and what else can we do while we're here to prevent any further cracking. Now the procedure does call for either a MIG weld, a stick weld, or a TIG weld with S6 wire. As far as what material this is made out of, you can... I'm not looking that. That's gross. But I can tell already that this is about A570 steel. You can hear it. You hear that? That's about 0.25% carbon. Now, along with this, it has a bit of copper content, but it's mostly iron. It's P number one, which matches up with all of our P number sixes, which is why we're gonna use 70S2 wire. I use S2 because it has triple deoxidized stuff. We'll put the parent metal material, its chemical composition over here, and we'll put the filler metal over here as far as so you can tell the difference from that P and F number. They match up good, just like peanut butter and jelly. Mm. Roller coaster, you never know what you're gonna find. Check this out. It's a crime scene. Is that a DNA? We got a crime scene here. I bet there's some DNA on it. You wanna lick it? <laughs> no. So there are only a couple tools that I needed for this job. So it was perfect. We got the little mini rogue over there. It's set up, it's plugged into 110. So that's one reason why I chose TIG welding. So as I can really control the puddle and the amount of metal that I put in at a lower amperage on some fixed plate like this. So I, that's why I chose TIG welding. We got our quarter inch grinder. We got us a burbit, a couple other things as far as hand tools that I pretty much never leave without, you know, your pliers, your crescent wrench. You gotta have a nice hammer so that you can beat it down the block right there. And then I got some 7018s just in case something goes wrong. Got a backup plan, always got a backup plan. And we're gonna use some die pin to get to the actual legitness of how legitly awful this legit crack is. So we've still got the previous repair here. It is, is known that we have to keep the top of this flat and the backside flat. Now on that backside, I can feel a little base metal reduction. So I know I'm gonna have to add a lot more metal. And in that spot, that's where that crack is. You can see right through the center of this weld, that crack goes all the way through. How bad is it? Is there any more cracks over here? What is the extent of the damage? We're gonna use the dye pen. We're gonna grind everything really smooth, even back up a lot more of this paint so that we can prep everything and then get ready for dye pen. And we'll be able to pop with that dye pen. First steps are just cleaning it up, using a wire wheel to get the paint further back and also using a flap disc to smoothen everything up so that we have a nice, smooth, clean surface to test on and we can tell the difference between a grinding mark and a crack. I like to use a flap disc after we get the meat down of this weld. That undercut is gonna show up on the die pin. We gotta know it's there, but I just wanna smooth it out because really heavy grind marks from a disc really kind of can camouflage some stuff. After the surface is prepped, we're ready to do a few steps of PT testing to find these cracks and really let them pop out. Wanna make sure we get it all clean. Is this cleaner? developer. No worries if you uh, mess up and you spray your developer first, the cleaner takes it off. Well, make sure you clean both sides really good so that the penetrant has nice clean metal to penetrate into. That's what she said. LOL. <laughs> no one make fun of me. No one make fun of me. Is it just hard to shake? I don't know. All right. Part's nice and clean, so we go ahead and spray this developer on. And we gotta do what's called dwell. We gotta have some dwell time. We're gonna spritz everywhere we want to think or know there might be a crack. And we gotta wait 10 minutes. Bad thing about cracks, again, is they always grow and they typically form from a few things. A hot crack is 
Something's typically done with the base metal beforehand, during welding, or right after welding is when that crack forms. That's called a hot crack. A cold crack is the weld's been on there for a while, it's held up for a couple months, and then now it's forming another crack. So that's kind of what we have here is what's called a cold crack. We want to know where it's coming from, where it ends, so we spray this penetrant on there, and we want to make sure there's no sharp edges, undercuts, slag inclusions, all our discontinuities that have sharp corners that can also form cracks. So we want to make sure there's no stress risers, so no more cracks can form. So now we go clean it, get all this excess stuff off, best we can. Don't get this stuff on your clothes, man. It's stuff stains so bad. You'll see the guys that do this for a living, man. They're just covered head to toe in red. I don't even need to put the developer on that. It's just bleeding up there. All right, that cracks clear as day. Now you can see it's really hard to read that whenever you've got a jagged weld or something in the way, so that's why we cleaned it up. We've got a really clear line as far as that goes. It looks like we had some other stuff on the backside we're gonna have to go ahead and repair too while we're here. No cracks, we wanna leave no cracks. The nice thing about PT is you don't have to be an expert. You can go down to your weld supply, pick up your three cans and do it. Now I did it a crude welder method of doing it. You're not really supposed to spray that cleaner directly on it. You're supposed to spray it on a rag and kind of wipe it off. That's the technician way. But let's get to grinding and get this crack out. Nothing to do now but just chase this crack with the grinding wheel. We've got an eighth inch disc on here. We're going to go up and down tracing this crack. We know where it starts. We've got to find where it finishes. And if we find anything else along the way, we need to make sure that we make note of it so that it gets fixed up. There ended up being a lot of stuff in here. We kind of really kind of you grooving this thing out a lot. And look what the f I found. This guy left a hole from the drill bit he used to try to stop the crack, the original crack. That's wild, he didn't even fill in the hole. See how it's stopping the bit? That's not tight in this And I don't have anything else to tighten it with. Rookie shit. Commence system shutdown. Three, two, one. I'm getting Yo, man, what do you think of this? Why is there another hole? I'm finding the other guy's holes. Like, all of his drill bit holes are all in here. I'm finding them. What's the prognosis, doctor? It's still going up there. We might have to continue to dig. We got a hole right here from the previous welder. We just get digging, you just keep finding. She's holy, take her to church. All the crack is all ground out now. I'm getting a better look at it. We're gonna patch up the backside and we're gonna put a root in this open root. We're gonna TIG weld all this out. Uh, so put, it's not too much heat and we're gonna go on back and forth. Got this little mini rogue set up to TIG, and we got the lift arc going on. We're only maxing out at 140 amps, which was plenty enough to put this open root in, and I thought I was gonna be able to TIG weld this thing completely out, but I found out that it was really only good for the shallow stuff, but for this really deep groove, we're gonna have to do something different. I think we're gonna switch to stick. This is taking too long. That groove wasn't gonna fill itself, so we switched the leads over to positive. We switched over to 7018. Now we're able to carry a little bit more iron and get this thing finished up.
like ass compared to mine. I'm gonna tell him too. You versus the guy she told you not to worry about. With all them boogers and lumps. Come on, man, do better. As always, thanks for watching the channel, guys. That one really wore me out. It kicked my butt. Weld repairs, you never know what you're gonna get. In this case, I thought we were dealing with just a simple little crack, but we kept digging and grinding, and we found more. That little Esau Mini Rogue on 110 held up just fine. That thing never pittered or sputtered out on me, whether we were TIG welding or putting that 7018 on there. So I hope you thought this was a really cool video. I like to say I enjoyed it, but I'm ready to get to the house. See you on the next one.